Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Just yesterday, Aptera released its um, 2021 SEC filing update for annual report. And it's really dense and we're probably going to do a couple of videos on it. But uh, I thought I would do a quick video on what I thought was the most interesting part of the whole thing. And in there, they had an exhibit, which was their technology license agreement with Cherry Automotive. Um, and so this was dated back in January 13 of 2022. But, you know, they just announced it like last week. So this had been in effect for several months by the time they announced it um, on their news page. So if you go down here. Um, you'll see, uh, let's skip over to their license, what they're licensing. So subject to Aptera's full compliance with terms, Cherry grants to Aptera and Aptera hereby accepts for the term a limited non-transferable, non-sub-licensable and non-exclusive right and license to use the technology only, only in connection with the authorized activities and only in the territory. Okay, so what do they mean by authorized activities? So if you look here, what do they mean by authorized activities? It means carrying over and modifying the applicable part for purposes of Aptera business activities. And the territory is North America, South America, European Union, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. So basically, it does not include any Asian countries. So um, Cherry is limiting them out of the Asian countries, so out of China out of Korea, out of Japan, you know, um, and all the Asian countries. Um, I guess Cherry wants to keep that market for themselves. And perhaps they are, this is just total speculation. Perhaps they're engineering something by which Cherry Automotive would handle the manufacture and distribution of Aptera should they want to expand into the Asian countries. But Aptera will license their technology for North America, South America, European Union, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. Now, which was funny because when we first heard this news, we were wondering if um, Cherry might take Aptera's technology. It looks like what's happening is Aptera is licensing Cherry's technology. So it's kind of the other way around. Aptera may sub-license the technology to suppliers of applicable parts to, eat, to such extent that the suppliers require and solely for purpose of providing components or parts of the applicable parts for Aptera solar electric vehicles. So they're saying uh, Aptera can give the technology and licenses to subcontractors uh, to supply parts for them to the specifications. All right. And then the rest of this is kind of like legal jargon saying that they can't do this and that, what, what they can't do about it. And then they also talk about how they're going to deliver it. They're going to deliver it. Um, via electronic transfer or team center system, the relevant tech technical documentation, which are set out in Schedule 1. And I looked for Schedule 1 and Schedule 2, and it is not released on SEC's thing, and I cannot find it. If we could find Schedule 1 and Schedule 2, we would know exactly what they're getting from Cherry, but we do not know that at this point. So we have to, we can only speculate on what's going on. Um, and then the liaison person for Cherry is uh, someone named Fu Fumei. And for Aptera, it's Matt Bachman. And if you remember, Matt Bachman is this guy, lead engineer. So this is Matt Bachman. And then payment terms. This is uh, where we figure out how much Aptera is paying them. Aptera is paying Cherry Automotive $2 million. It'll be divided into four equal installments of half a million dollars. So what happens is, is within five days of the execution of this agreement, they have already paid half a million dollars. So this was executed on January 13th. So they have paid them 500, a half a million dollars already. Then when the technical documentation has been issued, they get another half a million dollars. And then when they do, when they execute a part supply agreement and parts development agreement, they get the other half a million dollars. And then when they get the first batch of parts under the part supply agreement, they get the last half a million dollars. And also, Cherry will, Aptera is going to pay a royalty for using their technology of $258 per car, per vehicle. So every Aptera that's sold, 
uh, Aptera will have to pay Cherry $258. I don't know if that's a lot. doesn't seem like a lot, but maybe it is. Who knows? The most important uh, part about this whole thing is if you want to go back here, um, they're saying may sublicense the supplier of applicable parts. So what is this applicable parts? That's really important to know. And that's what I thought was the most um, interesting part of this whole thing. So applicable parts means those parts and components selected from Cherry electric vehicle models known as the EQ1 and the EQ5 as listed in Schedule 1 and Schedule 2. So if we got Schedule 1 and Schedule 2, we would know exactly which parts they're talking about. They will be carried over. So they're going to use some parts from these two vehicles and they're going to carry over or they're going to modify it by Aptera for use in Aptera solar electric vehicles. Well, the other funny thing about this thing is they talk about start of production and they said that start of production was going to be September of 2022. So at the time of this agreement, they thought that they were going to be able to start production in September of 2022. Um, I don't know if that's still the case, but that's what they were saying in this agreement. All right, so what is the EQ1 and the EQ5? So I looked it up, and this is what it is. This is the EQ5. It's a very standard-looking, small kind of crossover vehicle. I'm going to X this out here. Um, then, And this is the EQ1. So it's a very tiny, like, it's kind of a, almost a smart car-looking thing. See, it's it's really, really tiny. Very small. I think this is a two-seater, but it might be a four-seater because sometimes these these tiny cars are four-seaters. So that's what the, that thing looks like. See, it's a four-seater. It's amazing. They sit. They fit four people four into that tiny tiny car. I mean, you would never guess that you get four people in that car. And then this uh, this is the EQ5. We'll scroll through that. Kind of very standard looking, small, crossover vehicle type looking thing. And this is like the interior bits look like this on the EQ5. It looks pretty nice. Now, the question for me is what are they getting from the, out of these cars? What parts are they moving over from this car to the other car, to the Aptera? Um, so the, Chris Anthony said that the big component subsystems are going to be the front suspension, the rear suspension, the body, the closure system, the interior system, and the battery system. All right. So pretty sure it's not the body because the body is totally different. So it's not going to be the body. I don't think it's either the front or the rear suspension system because the, the suspension system is going to be totally different than the, between the Aptera and these cars. So we're left with the closure system, the battery system, or the interior system. Now, I don't think it's the closure system because the closure system is the door subassemblies. And the doors of these cars are nothing like the uh, butterfly doors of the Aptera. So I don't think it's the, I don't think it's the closure system. So we're left with the battery system or the interior system. Um, now it could, so I don't know which of the two it is. It could be the battery system, I guess. It's something that requires technology. And I guess the interior system could have technology if they're using the, uh, the infotainment system of these things. So here, this is Cherry's actual official site talking about the um, EQ5. And they say that the EQ5 has... Uh, level 2 automatic assist with adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, lane departure, autonomous emergency braking, uh, fatigue monitoring system, um, you know, automotive, automatic parking, that kind of stuff. So that technology, if they're licensing that stuff over and making the interior bits from, from them, maybe that's the technology they're talking about. Um, but I kind of thought that they would go with someone who that was part of the MIH collective that they're a part of. But perhaps not. The other possibility is that they're using the battery system. Now, Aptera is using their, they're building their own BMS and battery pack modules 
but perhaps Cherry has some way of, te some technology of encapsulating it, or the charging or discharging or the controller system, I don't know. So maybe it's the battery system, but I'm pretty sure it's either the battery system or the interior system. It's gotta be one of those two, or parts of those. Um, tell me what you guys think, uh, what they're licensing for Cherry. Now, if we can get a hold of Schedule 1 or Schedule 2, we would know exactly what it is, but unfortunately, I looked really hard for it, could not find it, it's not released yet, um, or at least I can't find it. Okay, well, tell me your thoughts below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Oh, I forgot after I made this video, um, there's this one part I, w I found out. In the, towards the end of this agreement uh, between Cherry, it's, there's 15.1 says no partnership. Nothing in this agreement is or shall be deemed to constitute a partnership between the parties, nor except as may be expressly set out in constitute any party the agent of the other for any purpose. So they, they, they like specifically put that in there. This is not a partnership. So I thought that was interesting. I don't know why they, I don't know if that's like normal legal language or if for some reason they decided that that was very important to put in there, but it is in there at the very end.